Hi there, welcome to the Automate Everything channel, where I will teach you how to be lazy without actually being lazy. Let's start by telling you what content you might expect around here. I'm a guy with a lot of hobbies, which are related to home automation, programming and making mostly technical stuff. The things I hate most is doing repetitive tasks and doing stuff inefficiently. I always seek ways to improve my workflow. The way I like to do this most is through automation, either programmatically or mechanically. I also like to learn, especially from you guys. So if you see me doing something strange in the tools I'm using, or if you have some other feedback you would like to share, please leave a comment. This video is part of a much bigger series of videos where I will show you how I apply automation by doing fun little projects with you from start to finish. So let's start with the problem I'm facing. I mean, everybody likes cocktails, right? I'm not really great in creating them. I always need to look up recipes online to find what drinks I need and how much to pour. I also like to have my cocktails fast and consistent so they always taste the same. Therefore, for my first project, I will be creating a cocktail machine. So, how do we create one? I don't know yet. Where to start? In my head, a cocktail is just a mixture of different kinds of drinks. Drinks which are stored in a bottle and they need to be poured the right way in the right amount in a glass. So, if we want to automate this, we need a machine which can do the following actions. First, extract fluids from different kinds of bottles, then move specific amounts of each fluid into a glass, and a way to select a cocktail which will be made. Moving fluids is usually done by means of a pump, and I've done some research, there are a lot of different pump types. So, for this project I've chosen for a peristaltic pump, mainly because it's non-invasive, which means that it does not come into direct contact with the fluid and therefore reduces contamination. It is able to self-prime, which basically means that it's able to create a little vacuum which will suck the fluid towards the pump. Because of this, the bottle can stay in an upright position. Lastly, a peristaltic pump is able to pump a specific amount of fluid per rotation of the rotor. It does this by creating little pockets which are separated by rollers where the fluid will be trapped until it leaves the output site. The output site can also be the input site, because if you reverse the direction it will pump the other way around. Peristaltic pumps come in many different shapes and sizes, but usually they all contain four components. The body of the pump, a tube, a rotating part with rollers that will run over the tube, aka the rotor, and a way to rotate the rotor. So, let's create a peristaltic pump. In order to design my own version of a peristaltic pump, I am going to use the following off-the-shelf products. 1x a NEMA 17 stepper motor, 3x a 608 bearing, and 1 meter of food grade silicone tubing with 6 mm outer diameter and 4 mm inner diameter. It's 1 mm thick. I will also 3D print the body and the rotor of the pump. In order to rotate the rotor, I'm going to use a NEMA 17 stepper motor. Stepper motors are awesome, because they can be precisely controlled by means of a stepper driver, connected to, for example, an Arduino. Every step sent to the driver will result in an X amount of decreased rotation of the shaft, and this is perfect for our application because every rotation of the rotor will pump an X amount of milliliters. Stepper motors are also cheap and widely available due to the 3D printing community. How they work and how to control them will be shown in a later video. I will first start with creating a digitalized version of the stepper motor, which I will use as a base for the designs of the body and rotor of the pump.
with the stepper design complete, I can now start building the rotor. The rotor consists out of two parts, the top which will function as a sort of cap for the bottom part and the bottom part will contain three cylinders which will hold the 608 bearings. Both parts need to have the D shape of the shaft from the stepper motor so it will fit correctly and do not slip on the shaft. Now, with the rotor design complete, I hope you have learned what a peristaltic pump is and that I have excited you to watch my upcoming video where I will show you how I create the body of the pump and finish off the design and already create the first prototype. I hope you've enjoyed my first video and if you did, please subscribe. Give the video a like and hit the bell if you want to know when I have uploaded part 2. Thank you for your attention and until next time, bye bye.